this is the master by Technoform. And since I've been in the business, this has been considered to be the holy grail of coffee brewers for the home. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Coffee q and I'm Jay, your host. We're here every weekday from 8 a.m. or not 10 a.m. 10 a.m. onward. A little while, at least talking about coffee. By now, you might have heard on the news that there has been a tragic accident here in Baltimore call about the um, the Francis Scott Key Bridge. I woke up this morning and I looked at my messages. I was like, oh my gosh, man, craziness. And if you're not familiar with this, there's a Baltimore Beltway 695 that goes around the entire city. And in 1977, the final link was to span the Baltimore Harbor Patapsco River with a bridge to make the the Beltway a complete belt. So that opened in 1977. And last night at 128 in the morning, this big container ship, thousand foot container ship called the Dahlia crashed into the low into one of the pylons and brought the entire bridge down. So right now they're they're looking for seven people that are maybe still in the water. Um, I saw a video just a few minutes ago where they're um there, there's actually a live stream video that happens that 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 I guess is always live streaming there and they pulled the clip and started distributing it. And basically there's a whole bunch of road crew working on the bridge. They collapsed. They were in the collapse. Cause when you look at the video, it's like, you can see the, the, the flashing lights from the bridge and the whole thing just collapses. So it's pretty crazy. I'm also having the same technical difficulty that I was having yesterday. So I'm presuming that it's streaming as normal, even though my reference monitor is not showing it to me. Like the, the YouTube studio reference is not showing me anything, but my other reference is showing me that it is feeding, and I'm basing it on yesterday's feed where you guys said that it was working. So hopefully it's still working. Let me know if it is. I'm presuming that we're almost two minutes into it and nobody said anything, so I guess we're still rolling. But, yeah, it's it's pretty crazy here right now. I mean, you know, a lot of my friends in the area, of course, are, are concerned, trying to see, like, if we know anybody that was there. Uh, Craig, good morning. How are you, bald head? The, my prediction is the Mocha Master can't even can cheat and the toes of you close the valve during bring. Oh, yeah, that's right. You were talking about the valve. I keep forgetting. Like this, this, there's, there's so let's go back to the Mocha Master. Um, and when Craig says also, I tasted the minimum brew in my Bonavita, same number four cone. It was 17 grams with the medium roast. Okay, great, great. So here's the thing about the Mocha Master. The Mocha Master was created first in 1968 by Gerard Smith, and he's an engineer that, that opened up the company and started out with a, a grinder, and then he came out with this in 1969. He developed in 1968, came out in 1969, and this is, I think, based off the 1974 revision, but they've kind of modernized it, and the idea was to make a really great brewer that would last the test of time. And, you know, if I've looked at some photos of what it's like on the interior, and there's definitely a really solid, beefy metal brewing chamber or a heating chamber that, that heats the water to the right temperature. And that's the critical thing with home brewers, that you want to have the home brewer be able to produce the right temperature water and deliver it in the right amount of time. Because, you know, mm -hmm. if you're making coffee brewer, like I have this one brawn brewer that I've had, or you know, it's a Krups brewer that I've had since the college, and like... I think I timed it once. It takes 12 minutes. This will deliver about four or five minutes for a full pot. There's a I have a, I have a real time brewing video on the main channel or here on this channel that uh, that demonstrates it at brewing. And I'm I'm working on a whole Mocha Master series of videos. I haven't really worked on it that much lately because I've been busy with other stuff. But here we are, the Mocha Master. This is the basic one. This is the one that has the heated plate, not the thermocraft. If you can get the thermocraft, it's probably better. Cuny's with us. Oh, Aloha in Hawaii, getting ready for the Salt Lake, getting ready to go to Salt Lake City for it. Oh, nice. So in Honolulu or in Hawaii and uh, heading to Salt Lake. When you go to Salt Lake, be sure to go visit a place called um, Cafe de Bola. Cafe de Bola down on Main Street, Central Main Street, 400. I don't know. The, the, the nomenclature of their, their streets are very strange. I imagine that the tattoo convention is going to be downtown. So... This place is downtown. Go see the guy there, John Piquet. He's a friend of mine. But beyond being a friend of mine, I believe that he is the best operator of coffee shop. He is the best coffee person in the United States. It's worth your visit to go there and go there just to visit his shop. I'm actually making a visit to Salt Lake City 
after the NAB show next month. So I'm going to go check it out. I, I've, I've been there a couple times before. And, um, you know, by knowing him, as, as we've been friends for a long time, 20 years, and seeing his work, being there, I mean, he's – there's all these pretty shops in the country. There's very few that I think are worth going to, and his is at the very top of the list. So go check it out. Go check it out. All right. So Dan's with us. Good morning, Dan. How are you? I've always wanted a Techno Forum, but I'm the only coffee. Here's the thing. So I've always wanted a Techno Forum as well. I mean, if you saw the video that I made, the first video of Mocha Master that I made, I found this just by chance. Right? These are these are brand new online. They're $360, which is a lot of money to spend for a coffee brewer. Like, especially when you can buy like the Simply Good Olsen for 100 bucks, 120, 110 dollars. You can buy the Bonavita for around that same price. You can buy those for a third of the price. And honestly, you're probably getting the same kind of, you're getting very similar performance. But this has always been the holy grail. It has some technical problems that people talk about, like the way that the, the, the thing distributes the water here, right? So the way this distributes water in the, in the uh, basket, you know, has some issues. But otherwise, it's really been the one that everybody says you should have. I happened to be at William Sonoma one day. I just walked in, I was looking around, and there's always a discount section of William Sonoma. And sometimes you can find really great deals. This one, there was a discount on it and another discount. So I got it instead of $360, it was $215. And I was like, and I sat there in the store, I was like, calculating. I was like, $215. <laughs> How could you say no at that point, right? It's like, oh my gosh, mom, good morning to you, man. How are you? How's uh, Ramadan hold treating you? All right, so today we're going to be making, okay, so so we want. The one thing the Mocha Master says it cannot do is make a single cup of coffee. And if, you, you know, like like if Dan's saying, like, you know, Dan, you're the only guy that's making this drinking coffee. I'm the only guy that's drinking coffee, right? So the last thing I want to do is make four cups at a time, right? I just want one cup, right? So now the Olsen that from Simply Good Coffee will brew one cup at a time. They say, or Technoform says, this will not. It's not designed for that, which is probably not designed for that. So it's not designed for that, but can it? That's really the question for the day. And Craig says, Dan, and for your information, in 2023, Mocha Master did a huge Black Friday discount for, oh, I didn't realize that. I did not get this other Black Friday discount. I didn't even know about that. So, okay, what are we going to do? We're going to, hey, Craig, do me a favor. You said that, I remember you said in one of the comments for all the videos, I think that was you that talked about this switch because I had a, a completely wrong thing about it. Did you say it was to turn this off, the heating element, or to change one? Would you mind repeating that? So there's two switches. There's one here that I thought was for half brewing or something. I forgot what I thought that it was. And then there's the power switch. What we're going to do is we're going to rate the brewing, our, our, our stuff, for one cup. So we're going to take um, 24 grams. Is that right? Yeah, 12 ounces. 12 ounces, 24 grams. Let's go and have a look at this here. We're going to take our scale and our this and some coffee. Like this is, this this scale I've been using, right, that we got from Timu for some pretty good price. It's definitely not close to, let's say, like the Akaya that it's kind of mimicking, or those, it is a, a little bit. All right, 24.2. It's not fast. Like, it took a while for that to happen. Um, it's not, it's a little bit, you know, if you press things here, you can easily, it's not so, it's, so it's not so substantial that it's like, uh, but you know what, it's, so far, so good. The one that the one the one thing that I really have been enjoying using is this this six dollar coffee. This has been really a great buy. Like it feels solid. This not bad, not bad. All right, so we've got our. Oh, it wasn't you. Okay, so somebody was talking about that. The switch. Anyway, so let's go to grinding. We will not be needing that anymore. We're going to bring in our trusty Barossa Virtual. So, so yesterday we talked about going back to 20. 
because it is quite noisy. So that's, that's one thing about this compared to, let's say, the, uh, the Ode, the fellow, the fellow, the, whatever the grinder we had here the other week. And that one was nice and quiet. And, all right, so let's get our little Mocha Master basket here. This is the basket. It's got a little, like, you could, there's actually a closed valve, right? So you want to open it, make sure that it's open. Otherwise, it just kind of fills. So if you want to do, like, a, a, a f infusion kind of thing, you can... And then fusion kind of thing, you could start here like this and then open it up. You know, if you want to get all like jiggy with it. But what we're going to do is we're just going to leave it the way it is. We're gonna, it uses a, it's hard to see here, but it does use a standard Melita, you know, wedge cone, which we're going to use here. I've got these bulk packs. This is actually what we use at the shops, right? These are bulk pack, pretty much generic. Melina number fours, and they work fantastic. They're fabulous. They are, you know, workhorses. These are 200. Um, we get them in like 400 double packs, right? And you know what? There's not, I, I have a very hard time finding a compelling reason to spend money on the other ones because I haven't seen a, a performance difference. All right, let's open that up here. Yeah, don't worry, Danny. You will, there'll be another sale coming along eventually somewhere, somewhere. You just got to keep your eyes open. You know, like, you know, if you have a William Sonoma near, just go buy your William Sonoma and, uh, you know, just keep on, walk, keep on, keep on. And I just happened to walk by one day and there it was. All right, so here's our filter. We're going to fold it over because, you know me, I like to have it sit nice and snug at the bottom. Just like that. Then we're going to get our coffee. And Craig says, Google says that the left button is to switch the machine on. The right button is for the hot plate. Okay, good, good. They turned that hot. They did give a hot plate function to it. I couldn't remember. You know, it's been, it has been a couple months. It's been, actually been probably that long since I've used this grinder. Oh, this is this brewer. So there's our grind. A little bit better, a little more finer than yesterday. So hopefully that'll work better. We're going to put that back in here. Uh, how's that look? Looks good. Okay, looks good. And then we're going to take this top off, and we're going to measure out our water. So I'm getting my silicone measurer. Nice about this, it has it's it's graduated. You get these at the restaurant store, they're really kind of handy. They can put they can take hot liquids and you know they're fairly easy to use. So we're gonna do 350 milliliters of water. Oh, okay, it's a little bit more than 350, but you get you get the drift, right? You get the drift. And we're gonna pour that in here. I'm going to turn this on, and I'm presuming that if I if this is on, can, oop, I'm presuming that if this here, ooh, this here is on, and this is off, is that is the red light on? Is the red light on? Yeah, it's on. Oh, yeah, I can hear it moving. That uh, the plate is off. Okay, so let's have a look here. What's happening in the top? I can hear it boiling the water. So it boils pretty fast, like it, it's working pretty fast. And as you can see here, you can oh, it's already coming through. Already we reached the, a, a boiling point. So what's happening is that basically there is a heating element in here that's really small, that's putting a lot of energy towards the chamber that boils the water in this little vessel that actually spurts up. So as you see it spurting, that's because of the boiling action. But we're also getting a little bit of like pre-infusion or just kind of like blooming that's happening. Now here's, you can see here, right there on the edge, there's a little bit of like un, 
there's a, it's not getting quite saturated. So this is one of the critiques of this unit is that it doesn't fully saturate all your water, which may be a good reason to, let's say, if we're going to take a moment here, let's close this. Let's close the valve. We'll let it build up some water and then see if it gets better saturation. Because what we're getting is here, we're getting a little bit, it's just kind of like there's stuff riding up here on the side. There's stuff here that hasn't been exposed. So I'm going to fill it so that it... Yeah, now we're getting more fill. I'm just going to tap that there. I can't help myself but to tap things like that. All right, now we got full saturation of the coffee. So now I'm going to reopen the valve. I'm going to open the valve here. And now it's going to flow through. Now it's flowing through pretty fast. And it sounds like the coffee has, or the machine has fully consumed all of the water, heated it. The boiling that's happening here is very, very, has stopped. It's just stopped now. So now all we're waiting for is the fall. And the one thing about this, this carafe is that it offers a mixing stem. There's a stem here that goes from the, the cap that goes straight to the bottom. So it forces the liquid to the bottom of the, of, the, of the carafe so that it basically will roll up and mix and homogenize with the rest of the coffee. All right. It seems that it's, it's getting to a pretty fast drip at the moment. So we're almost, we're almost there. We're almost there. <laughs> Let's get our cup. So that's still on. It's it's on. Ouch. Yeah, don't put your finger on the plot on the plot on the on the, on the plate. Let's zoom in a little bit there. Ooh. So now I've used up the entire amount of water, a brewed coffee, which means that this is a 10 ounce cup. So we're rating for 12 ounces. So this is a little bit thick, we're expecting. Interesting. Not bad. I want to turn that off. It's quite hot, which is good. My palate's a little bit scorched. Right? My, my, the roof of my mouth is a little bit scorched from the, the pizza I had on Sunday. All right. A little bit heavy. Like you can feel that thickness because, you know, we're talking about a two ounce difference in finished liquid for the same amount of coffee. So I'm presuming that they're, they're that inside the, the Mocha Master, there's this chamber, it's about that big, right? And it's, it's wrapped in a coil that heats it. So I'm gonna have to, I'm making the presumption now that there is an amount of water that remains that will be displaced. So for example, I'm, I'm guessing that it works like this. I don't really know, but I'm guessing. Like, let's say in, in a typical bun, like a real basic bun, CWT type of coffee brewer, there's a big reservoir of water. So basically, it is the enough water to to displace. It's enough water to fill an air. Let's say a 2.2 liter air pot or three liter air pot. So it's a three liter tank that has water in it, and it's constantly in there, and it's constantly heating. But it's keeping it at a temperature. And when you add water to the system, whether it's plumbed in and you hit the button and it lets in the amount of water, or you pour it in like some of the models allow you to do, that new water will displace the hot water and push the hot water out in, and brew the coffee. But if you don't have it filled, it won't, it'll only dispense what's in excess of the three liters that it takes to fill the tank. So I'm presuming that because we lost two ounces of finished coffee with this 
the this brewer must work in a very similar way. I mean, this has been sitting around for the last two months um, on my kitchen counter. And I'm guessing that part of that liquid or part of the water that was in the reservoir has dissipated or evaporated. And by us adding the water to it, we've displaced that, we've replaced that, and then displacement was only about 10 ounces. That's my guess. That's my guess. And then Dan's asking, so basically running a half carafe works out to one proper, well, I don't know about, I would say it was half carafe. It was definitely less than half. Um, really what I was doing is just measuring out how much water we're going to use. Now you can use this. There is graduations on the reservoir here um, in liters, like quarter liter, half liter, three quarters liter, one liter, one quarter liter, and then cup wise two, four. What, and you know, so if you've, if we do oh, 350 mils is over a third. So we would probably fill the, and I'm not, I didn't pay attention to how far it actually filled, but we should fill the water here. Let's say if you wanted to do this, fill it to about there. And that should give you more or less the right amount, presuming that your inner tank is fully filled, right? And I do think that's why we had this here. So I, I wouldn't say that, you know, Basically, running half craft works out to one proper cup. It was more, it's more like we were measuring for one cup, right? We measured 24 grams, which is our normal 12 ounce recipe for the coffee. And then we use 350 milliliters of water, which is our normal recipe again <laughs> for the coffee. So we're just following our basic techniques that we would use for pour over hand brewing and just applying it to uh, a mechanized brewer. So basically, the idea is that the principle of brewings are the same right? How much water to how much coffee, as well as temperature of the water and exposure to the coffee. Those are always the factors that are kind of in play, regardless of the brew method. We're just trying to find ways to apply that to a way to make it a little more simple so that this way you could just grind, put it in there, add the water, hit the button and walk away rather than sit there and, and do all of this. Like this is... This is nice when you have the time, but when you're like trying to do other stuff, like in the early morning, you don't want to, I don't want to do this. I don't, I don't wanna, but I'm a lazy coffee guy, right? What do I know? I don't know anything. We want to see how well does this coffee brew in this type of method using these parameters. And actually, you know, let's, let's take into account that, um, okay, so I drank a little bit. Let me mix in a little bit of water to dilute it slightly. But this dilution should bring us closer to the actual um, ratio that we would normally be drinking. Oh, and that's definitely, that's definitely right in the, in the param, right in the, the ballpark of where we want to be. That's really, actually, that's really great. As good, probably better than yesterday's brew. So it did cool it down a little bit because that's just room temperature water. And, um, but yeah, that's bringing us closer to the ratio that we're looking for. Really nice, really approachable. So that, this works pretty darn well. <laughs> Take that technoform. And so maybe we'll try some more. Well, you know, maybe in future times we'll try, if you try it and let's say that my analysis of this boiler is incorrect. And for whatever reason, you put three, put 350 grams and it only gives us 300 grams back, right? Uh, you might just, you, basically the only, the way to, to go around that is just compensating for it. You might have to make it 400 milliliters instead of 350 to get the volume that we want, the 12 ounces. And again, it goes back to calculating whatever your cup size is. So if you wanted to do one cup that's 12, you'd use 24 grams and 350 mils. And if you wanted to use, if you want to make, let's say a 20 ounce cup, you could do that as well. So you just take the two times four, 40 ounces, 40 grams of, of coffee and um, 20, maybe tw up to 23 to 24 ounces of water. Now I'm talking ounce because it's a lot faster for me to think in that. I, I've been, you know, basically I have like for milliliters for water in brewing, I have like reference points. So 30, 350 mils is, will give us, is really closer to 14 gram, 14 ounces of coffee. But by the time you factor in the absorption of the coffee that, that's remaining in the saturated grounds, it'll give you about 12 ounces. So that, that's kind of why we talk about it that way. It's not, 
350 milliliters is not exactly 12 ounces. It's closer to 14. So you're going to add a little bit more. And so the more coffee you add, the more you want to you want you want to give an offset for the saturation. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. All right. I like it. I like it. So, you know, if you want to buy a $350, $360 coffee, grind, uh, coffee brewer, well worth it. And the nice thing is that you can easily scale it up to 12 ounce to 12 cups, 10 cups. It's, it's, it's a 10 cup maker, which is like 40 ounces. So it's not really, it's 10 teeny tiny cups if you're all dainty and using like Wedgwood China. But if you're using like America, Or if you're using America, this will do one. This will do like four. <laughs> All right. So I guess that's going to be it for today. Thank you very much for tuning in. Appreciate you being with us. Tomorrow, we've got a little bit of an interesting show coming up. We're going to be, I'm going to be showing you how to roast coffee on a Dietrich IR12 automated roaster. Um, we're going to be heading down to Baltimore City to hang out at Vent Coffee Roasters. I've got to do some roasting for Spro, and uh, Sarah has been a, an old friend, and uh, she was actually my, my former right-hand person at Spro many, many, about 10, 10, 12 years ago. And she's gone out on her own several years back and created a place called Vent Coffee Roasters, really great place down in Baltimore City. We're going to go hang out there for a bit and do the show from there while I'm roasting coffee. Uh, be roasting more House Nation and maybe a little bit of espresso. So we'll get to talk about that. And you get to see this this cool roaster. It's a, it's a when I was pricing it with with uh, Diedrich last year for one of our clients, uh, they're about forty five thousand dollars. They're great roasters, twelve kilo capacity, so about twenty pound roast batches, and um, they call it the million dollar roaster because it will roast up to a million dollars in revenue for you. At least it's good for that. So you should, by the time you start to exceed a million dollars in revenue from your roasting business, that's probably around the time when you're like, maybe I need a bigger roaster. So come join me then tomorrow, 10 a.m., back again. And, uh, yeah, Mom, good to see you. Dan, Keone, Craig, always good to have you guys. And if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, put them in the comments down below if you're watching on the replay. And I'll be back again tomorrow. See you next time.